Does your forward bending look like Lunny's with a nice flat back or more like Jalen's? Maybe you're just forward bending with your middle spine. If you look a little bit more like Jalen, this um, exercise is for you. Go ahead and lie down on your back, Lenny. So you want to remember that forward folding is, if the pelvis is fixed, is movement of the leg bone in the hip socket. Or if your legs are what is fixed, it's movement of the pelvis over the leg bone. Yeah. And if you don't have that movement in your hips, it's going to be really difficult for you to forward fold. So let's dig in a little bit to your hamstrings and your hips today. Go ahead and come to your mat into a hands and knees position. You guys can face forward. First things first, let's take some simple movements of the spine. Imagine somebody just put a heavy weight on your tailbone. Drop your tailbone to the floor and slowly curl up your spine in articulated cat and cow. Roll that spinal flexion all the way up between your shoulder blades into your neck and hold. Exhale, squeeze your ribs closer together and try to curl a little bit deeper. Press your palms into the floor, press up between your shoulder blades, and as if the weight just came off your tailbone, lift your tail to the sky like it's being lifted up by a balloon, and slowly roll a backward bend up your spine, one vertebra at a time between the scapula into your neck, look at the sky. Pull the back of your head and your tail closer together, and again, keep your chest up here, drop the tailbone, a big heavy lead weight. See how much movement you can feel and picture each and every one of the bumps of your spine slowly rolling up towards the ceiling in consecutive order. Tailbone of balloons, lift your tail and slowly roll up. One vertebra at a time. Tuck your tail and roll. And then lift your tail and meet us back in a neutral spine position, taking your time. So from your back bend, pull to neutral. And I want you to pay attention. You can even touch them to these two bottom lowest ribs of yours. Try to squeeze them closer together. This is a contraction of your obliques muscles. So here in your neutral spine, only the tailbone drops down. Squeeze in more with your lower ribs. And I want you to picture there is a big, sharp kitchen knife right sticking up in between your hands, right at your breastbone. Squeeze your ribs closer together. Maybe you can tuck the tail a little bit more. And as you take an inhale breath, don't stab yourself. Breathe in, into the muscles in your upper back. Try to fill the back side of your lungs as much as you can fill up. And as you exhale, tail tucks a little more, ribs squeeze a little bit more. Exhale out a little bit more. And then inhale. Try to fill into your upper back. Feel that expansion up there. Make it broader, make it wider. Hold, press your shoulder blades away from each other, and then inhale. Exhale, tuck the tail more, squeeze the ribs closer, push the floor away, and come back to neutral spine position. Now we'll keep the upper chest out of this backward bend completely. So activate those lower ribs, pull them together, and in this position, tuck your tail as much as you can. You'll feel your lower back start to stretch. And then lift your tail and see if you can get a sensation of rocking your pelvis. Tuck your tail. Now, for those of you who are really flexible in forward folds, you're probably getting a good bit of range of motion. Great. As you tuck your tail, engage your hamstrings. Beautiful. Now we're going to walk your hands out, not all the way, but to your spines at about a 45 degree angle. And we'll keep that going. Tuck your tail, stretch your lower back. Lift your tail, stick it up to the sky. Tuck your tail, stretch your lower back, lift your tail, and feel that stretching on the backside of your legs. As you tuck your tail under, we're doing five reps. Squeeze your hamstrings. This is three. Lift your tail. Switch, tuck and curl. Feel your lower back stretch. And then lift your tail up towards the sky. Last one, tuck and curl. Exhale, extend and lift and see if that allows you to walk a little bit deeper. You may even be able to put your head on the floor here. Hips sink back a little bit further, feeling that stretching in your arms. Now my toes are tucked under, but you can untuck your toes. That's absolutely fine. And in this position with your body weighing heavy to the floor, try it again. Your head's going to travel. Tuck your tail. Lift your tail. Can you get some kind of movement? Tuck your tail. Lift your tail for three, 
and 4, and 5. Sink in a little bit deeper, forward fold, and shift your way back up to hands and knees. Same things from our bare plank, plank position. So tuck your toes under, hover your knees, and then tuck the tail and roll up. Tuck your chin to your chest, look at your belly. Lift your tailbone, find the backward bend. Picture each and every one of those bumps in your spines, tuck and roll, moving one by one, like treads on your mountain bike tire, hitting the road one at a time. Tuck and curl. And meet us in that neutral spine position. Can you floss the pelvis? Tailbone up, tailbone under. Tailbone up, tailbone under, ribs together. Tailbone up, tailbone under. That's three. Up, tuck it hard. That's four. Lift, and five. Separate your knees wide. Sit your hips back. Walk forward, fold, getting it here into the groin now. Much wider than before through your knees. With a shift in the alignment of your thighs, can you still create that movement with your pelvis? Tuck your tail under. It may drag your body closer. Lift your tail up. Two, tuck, and lift. Like a lead weight on your tailbone, tuck. Now you tied balloons to it, lift. That's three. Tuck, lift for four, and tuck. Last round. Lift for five. Let's take a simple side stretch. Walk your hands to the left. Reach with your right arm. You can place right hand on top of the left. I like to interlock to get a little bit of leverage so you can pull back and down and dip right shoulder towards the floor. There's going to be a spot in there for you that feels just right for your body. Take it. And now in this position, when you breathe in, Pull your lower ribs together, and can you breathe into the right side of your lungs? Try to push the air over there. Imagine the ribs separating from each other a little bit more. And exhale, squeeze the ribs a little closer together. Let's try it one more time. Inhale, fill the right side. Exhale, squeeze closer together and rest. Slowly walk your way to the opposite side. Left hand on top of the right, or separate if you need it to balance, right? Find the depth that's right for you. This side, pull back to the left and lean into the left shoulder. So you find that spot that you exactly need. If you do a lot of push-ups or weightlifting, you probably have some tight muscles under that left scapula. And then imagine those obliques today. Squeeze your lower ribs together. Inhale to the left side of your chest. Exhale, squeeze the ribs closer. Like you're tying up a pair of shoelaces or your hiking boots super duper tight. Inhale. Exhale, let it go. Let's do that one more time. Ready? Inhale. Exhale. Here, just settle into the stretch. And breathe. Walk your way back to the center. Wide with the hands, forehead to the floor, straight with your spine for a beat here. But still imagine that little knife. It's a short knife now. Put it right under your rib cage where your xiphoid processor, your diaphragm is. And when you inhale, instead of pushing down and stabbing yourself, try to breathe into the back side of your ribs. And exhale. One of our big survival techniques as a yoga as a yoga practitioner is backward bending. And so whenever we can't do something, we automatically backward bend. Same thing with breathing. We tend to breathe by pushing the top of the belly forward. Instead of using your back to breathe, try to breathe uh, in a back bend. Try to breathe 360 like a barrel. Inhale into the back side of your ribs. Keep the pressure completely off of that knife and exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale, let it go through your nose, helping to calm the sympathetic nervous system. And press yourself back up to the hands and knees position. Step your right leg forward. 
And this is a good time to bring your blocks nearby. If you don't have blocks at home, you can stack books, one on either side of your yoga mat, right leg steps forward. Or just do this next to a couch, so you have something to lean on, or the coffee table. We'll start, oh, Jalen only has one. Arms up over your head, reach up to the sky, and let's start with a little backward bend. So press forward through your left hip, lift up with your breastbone, reach and hold. Inhale back to the center, flip your palms to the sky, take a side bend to the right. Beautiful, plant your left hand, open up to the right side. If you feel good, you can tuck your back toes and lift your knee. Yeah, pressing hips forward and down. Beautiful, then unwind, hands to the floor or to your blocks. Shift your weight back for a hamstring stretch. You got it. And so we have the blocks here on purpose for you guys. Come back out of this just a little bit. And let's see if you can activate your pelvis, tailbone under, and then tailbone out. Can you keep your legs still, move your pelvis, rock it backward, and rock it forward? Our goal when we do these forward bends is to rock the pelvis forward over your straight leg instead of trying to do a, a forward bend with your back. So bring yourself to a position where you can stick that tail out and feel a pretty good stretch in the back of your right leg. And I'm going to set your timer because we are going to pales and rails this movement. And just breathe here. It shouldn't feel too overwhelming. Something that's fairly comfortable. And you can do without a big round in your back. If your blocks aren't high enough, stack them. Use the couch. You can sit up as high as you need to to feel straight through the spine as you execute the stretch. So our goal here is fixed leg. We're going to try our best to move the pelvis. And one of the reasons that you don't have mobility in your hamstrings is biological, right? So it's the joint capsule in your hip, or it is the... Um, length and elasticity, the hydration of the muscles of your leg. But the other reason is neurological. If your 15-year-old daughter just got her permit, would you let her drive your Lamborghini? Probably not. She's going to learn on the diesel Jetta. So she, uh, she will crash it. So what we're, our goal is here is that we actually have to prove to your body that you deserve to drive a Lamborghini. You have a Lamborghini, you just, your brain doesn't think you deserve to drive it yet. So in this position, could you fight off an attacker? Could you jump up and catch your grandma before she fell and broke a hip? If you couldn't, your body's not going to let you go any deeper. So what we're going to work on today is owning this range of motion. So remember how we worked with your obliques before. Pull your lower ribs together. Press your diaphragm down so that your abdomen feels really tight, strong, and stable. And very slowly, just very gently, with 10% of your strength, begin to press your right heel into the floor. Feel the backside of your right leg engage, the backside of your buttocks. Maybe even a little bit you can feel it into the backside of the glute up by your lower back. And then slowly begin to ramp that up radiate, press down through the blocks, drive your heel into the floor, use 40% of your strength, maybe 50. And if you are not injured, use your greatest, safest effort for 10 seconds. Nine, push down, eight. Like you want to save your grandma, seven. You got this, six, five. You keep going, push down, three, all the way, two, one. Now switch and lift, high as you can. Lift. Lift, lift, higher, lift, stronger for three, two, one. Let your leg down, fold, stick your tail out, fold forward, come deeper. Breathe and rest. You like that, honey? This is for your hamstrings. How's that feeling, everybody? Mm-hmm. These are good exercises to do with friends. You can do them enemies. with enemies. <laughs> you can do them to your enemies. 
You can do them while you're watching a show. A lot of times if we're going to watch a movie with the kids, I'll do like my wrist cars and my ankle cars and my pails and rails for those little joints. If you have any good movie recommendations to watch with tweens, let me know. We've already seen The Princess Bride and Goonies, so what's next? So this bit here where we're lying still, this is really important. And your focus as a practitioner here has got to be on breathing through your nose. So inhale by your nose and exhale by your nose. Your nervous system has major impact on the way everything in your body functions. Whether or not you're calm affects how you digest food, how your immune system shows up in the world. We're going to do that pails and rails activity again one more time. And so remember, as we do this and we get towards that greatest, safest effort, that's really for you. So if you've got an injury, you're operating at like 0 to 20% of your capacity. And for the rest of you, if you don't have pain while you're doing this, work to your ability. Whenever I teach this in workshops, you will be like, my knee hurts. If your knee hurts, you're going too hard. It's not always easy to learn that, but that is this is the lesson. This is what this is all about, is learning where your edge actually is, challenging yourself, challenging your edge, but also having respect for your edge. Even if you're tough and cool, if you jump into the Grand Canyon, you're dead. All right, we ready? Slowly start to push down. Like you're driving your heel through the floor. Like you could actually punch a hole in the floor. Use 20%. Irradiate 30%. Get your back involved. 40%. Use your other legs. Use your butt. 50%. 60% of your effort. Push your heel through the floor. Ready? Greatest. Safest. Effort for 10. Drive it down. 9. Everybody. 8. Seven, stick with it. Six, push harder. Five, leave a dent. Four, three, two, one, rails. Lift it up. Don't come back. Stay in it. Lift it. Hover. Lift it. Hover. Five, higher. Four, if it cramps, you win. Three, come on. Two, one, set it. Fold deeper. Hold the stretch. Do you notice a difference from where you started? where you are now. Yeah, sorry I forgot to say it earlier. If your knee bothers you in this one, like Jalen, you can just fold up your mat. Some of you who are a little more flexible, maybe sitting back on your heel more, that's okay. If you've got good movement in your pelvis, your butt will probably be closer to the floor. A-okay. This is the boring bit. This is the part where we just breathe. Learning to trust your body again, feel comfortable in it. Force is the language of your cells. So if you want to talk to your cells, it's always through force. Pressure, intensity, massage, touch, you name it. And now we're having a conversation with these cells in your leg, and we're saying, hey, we actually need you to be more mobile more flexible, more elastic, more resilient. And there is a great question out there, right? How much range of motion, how much mobility do I need? And it really depends on what you do. If you are a ballet dancer, you probably need a lot of mobility. If you're a baseball pitcher, holy smokes, your shoulder better be able to externally rotate, right? What you need is for range of motion, whatever you need to do for whatever you do in life, plus a little bit extra, just in case something weird happens. Like you're playing tag with your daughter and you roll your ankle, right? You need a little bit more <laughs> range <laughs> for those oh shit moments. <laughs> so Jalen doesn't have to carry me on his back again. Okay, use your blocks and slowly back your way out. And we're gonna actually take it over onto your left-hand side. You can leave your blocks here, we'll come back for them. And we'll just take a little range of motion in that hip. So you can prop your head up or put it on a block, tuck your knees up like you're doing clams, and we'll bring the right knee up and into your chest. So Jalen, go ahead and lie on your left side. Okay, well then who's not on their left side? Oh, I'm looking at Lenny in the mirror. Sorry about that. Pull your knee up and into your chest, and then open your right leg to the sky like you're a dog pee on a fire hydrant. Keep the leg right here. Flex your foot. Internally rotate as much as you can. Get the heel really high. Oh, this is a good time to put your water bottle right behind your lower back. Make sure you don't touch the water bottle. Reach your knee behind you. Keep the water bottle upright. 
If it's a glass of water, yeah, keep all the water in the glass. Sweep the leg down, up towards your face, and open again. We're going to do this three times. So open, internally rotate. Reach the knee behind you. Try not to even touch the water bottle. You'll probably get a butt cramp if this is your first time. The longer you do this stuff, open and lift. Internally rotate. The longer you do it, the less cramps you get, but the more range and control you have. And then sweep your knee up into your chest. Now let's take in the other direction. Bring your knee backward. This time, externally rotate. So heel down, knee high, and then reach your knee up to your right shoulder. Try to get it to touch. Oh, somebody got a cram. And then exhale, lower it down. Open and externally rotate. Knee to shoulder and lower it down. One more. Sweep it back. Turn it out. Fight for two more degrees. Fight for range. Pull your knee to your shoulder and gently lower it down. Awesome. For those of you that have been doing back to your hands and knees, have been doing our morning routine, if you struggle to do those hip car standing, go ahead and do them like this, lying on your side. So we got another leg to do. We might as well do it. All right, I'm going to face forward like you guys today. So we'll take right leg forward, left leg back. And just like we did before, arms up. Hang on, honey. Lift and back bend. Reach to the center. Nice little side bend. Good. Let's take that twist. Right hand down, left hand high, open. You can stay right here kneeling. It's more stable or tuck your back toes and lift. And then lower your left hand down. Lower your right knee down and we'll shift back to that hamstring stretch. And you remember, we're going to be here for a while. So do what it's going to take for you to get yourself comfortable. Remember first, come up a little bit higher than normal and just see if you can tuck your pelvis under and rock your pelvis forward. Tuck your pelvis under, rock your pelvis forward. Notice when you move from your pelvis how much more you feel this in your hamstring. So let's go there. Inhale to lengthen. And as you, if you exhale, fold forward if you can come down with your back flat and hold it here. Just breathing into this stretch. And each time you do these exercises, these pails and rails, you'll convince your brain to give you about 15 more degrees range of motion. And so when you get back into the stretch after the pails and rails, remember that that first deep inhale through your nose and slow exhale through your nose is part of what upregulates this range to your brain and convinces your nervous system that it's totally safe for you to do it. Nice and steady. Slow breathing. And again, remembering if you need more blocks, if you need a higher boost, whatever it is for you to be able to stay in this position, double up your towel. Right from home, you can always pause the video and go grab anything that you need. When I was, I think I was like 16, my dad gave me this dictionary that we still have at our house. It's like this thick. Right, you had a couple of those suckers, stack them up. Anybody have some Encyclopedia Britannica's left over? I mentioned encyclopedias to my kids the other day, and they were like, what's that? <laughs> They've literally never even seen one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so you guys remember what we're doing. First, got to brace through your trunk, so there's not going to be any rounding or hunching here. It stays stable. Tighten across the front of your belly and press your foot diaphragm down like it's a French press so you feel a lot of pressure into your abdomen. And then from here, from that strength, slowly begin to gently press your left heel into the floor. Take it slowly, first gear. Once you feel stable and you can keep your core strong, push a little higher, maybe 20% of what you can do. 30. Build it up, 40%. Use your right glute, 50%. Use your shoulders. Drive your heel into the floor. Dent your living room floor for 10. Push it down, nine. Feel your hammies engaged, eight. You've got this, seven. Come on, push away, six, five, four. Stay with it, three, two, one. Lift it, hover. I want you to get a cramp on the front of your hip. So lift it higher, squeeze it harder, and five, stick with it. Four, lock your knee. Three, tighten your belly. Two, one, 
lower the heel, lengthen your spine, fold in a little bit deeper. You need to adjust your blocks. The fold should feel like a stretch. And just like we talked earlier, this is about tuning into your body, something that feels like I think my hamstring's gonna rip off the bone. Probably not what you're looking for in a therapeutic practice. A big inhale through the nose, slow exhale through the nose. This type of work can feel tedious, can be hard to get you to do, but this is the work that is gonna transform your body and improve everything that you do in your life. If you can transfer weight, if you can control your joints and your ligaments and your tendons and your muscles and your bones, everything you do will be better. You lift more, run faster, live without pain, reduce inflammation. This is what it's about. I just spoke, I did a lecture this week on um, the effects of hot yoga on post-acute withdrawal symptoms and recovery. And we were, I was talking with a physician and she was talking about how plastic your brain is and how amazing it is it can change. It changes with drug use, but it can also change and adapt back. And that's the beauty of neuroplasticity in the brain. But what we forget to talk about, especially in recovery, is that plasticity sucks and is really uncomfortable and is a long, slow, tedious process. And the same goes for plasticity of your, your tissues as well. And a lot of the time when we're doing this, this plasticity stuff, it's sort of uncomfortable and we'd rather be doing other stuff. All right. Learn to find the difference between I'm uncomfortable and don't like this, and this hurts and is a signal for me to stop doing what I'm doing or to turn the intensity down. Because even, right, fresh out of surgery, you can do 10% capacity cars, no problem. All right, so let's go back to that intra-abdominal pressure. Tighten across the front of your belly, engage from the pelvic floor, press your diaphragm down, and slowly drive down through your left heel into the floor 10%. 20, tighten your left thigh. 30, tighten the right thigh. 40%, use your strength. 50%, press into the block. 60%, here we go. Greatest, safest, effort. 10, push down. 9, 8, 7, you've got this. 6. Five, it's hard work. Four, you're worth it. Three, come on. Two, one, lift, leg up. Closer, higher, stronger. Get a cramp. Ten, five, four, three, higher, two, one. Heel down, lengthen your spine, tip your pelvis forward, come deeper into the stretch. You may need to adjust your blocks more forward. Make sure there's a feeling here of your chest pressing towards the front of the room so that your back stays out of it. Right, your back is like your little sister. I can help, I can help, I can help, I can help. Right, but she can't even see over the counter yet. Leave your back out of it. There's a time for your back and it's not this right now. Deep inhale through your nose. And exhale through your nose. When I talk to folks about their home practice of FRC, the biggest place folks um, talk about skimping is in the in-betweens. We all want to do the fancy work stuff. Where we get to sweat and grunt and get cramps. But it's this sitting part that helps us aid that process of plasticity, of transformation. You'll literally not have the same body you did when you started. And so now we got to start thinking about, okay, what if you don't have a lot of um, flexion and extension of your hips? If you can't do that, where do you start? If we want to improve the range of motion in your hips, what we're going to do for work after this is internal rotation. That's where this head's next. First we make space, then we go back and forth. So if you've been doing Jen's splits video, awesome. There's a ton of forward and back movement for the hips in there. Make sure you're getting your IR and ER, your internal and external rotation for your hips before you do that workout so you actually have space to utilize it. All right? Make room, clear a path. Right? If there's trash all over the floor, you're not going to walk the baby to the crib. You're going to clean the bedroom before the baby comes home from the hospital. Slowly back your way out of it. And make your way over onto your right-hand side. Set those blocks to the side. 
take our controlled articular rotations with the left leg. So tuck your knees up, pull your left knee up into your chest, open like a fire hydrant. If you really struggle with your hips rocking back and forth, always put something behind you. Try not to even touch it. Uh, internally rotate and reach your knee behind you. Back, then down, forward, and in. Everybody open. Internally rotate. Sweep. And you can take your time, right? If there's some area back there that feels like unknown, untouched lands, this un uncharted territory, go slowly in that area. Open and internally rotate. And just figure out, huh, why don't I have control of my leg when it's internally rotated and behind me? What's over there? Every time you do these controlled articular rotations, you are redrawing the map of how to use that joint. Switch directions. Extend the hip, externally rotate. Lift your knee. Somebody dropped their water bottle up to your shoulder. Fight for it. Try to touch it and take it down. Sweep. External. Lift. And lower. Sweep. Externally rotate. Fight for two more degrees. Pull your knee to your shoulder and take it down. And now, if you were looking for a video like this, my guess is, go ahead and everybody sit up. We're going to take a bear sit position facing forward. You probably aren't coming to this because you have pretty good range of motion. You probably didn't have a lot of good range of motion. So let's just start with simple exercises you can do if your hip kind of hurts or you really struggle with rotation. So all we're going to take is right leg first, internally rotate it as far as you can without using your back, right? So just the leg in the socket and then out. When you get to the out, use a little extra strength, pull it a little farther and then internal We'll take that three times, squeeze it a little more, and out. If you're feeling this in your knee, that's because you're trying to like get your foot in or your knee in. Think about pushing from your hip, push your leg, turn it over, and then take it out. And we'll do the same thing on the left. Flex your ankle, turn your leg in, and rotate it out. The sensation here should be in the muscles of your hip. So internally rotate. It's kind of up in this area. Some of that meat you get going and take it out. Squeeze, fight for a little more internal and external. These are the types of ranges of motion you want to do. We're all going to stand up like, you know, a couple hundred times a day. So where else you can put it in your life is like standing in line at the grocery store. So let's take the left leg first because it's easier for me. Just a little bend in your standing leg. Internal rotation, external rotation, internal, external. Doing some nice, good, clean reps where you're not twisting the pelvis at all, but really concentrating on rotating your thigh bone in the hip socket. Let's switch sides. A little bend in the standing leg. Internal. External. Internal. External. If you wear a long dress, people will never even know you're doing this. Internal. External. One more. Fight for in. Fight for out. Good. Let's take some tick-tock, right? Le left leg straight up. Bring your knee across the midline and out to the side. Across the midline and out to the side. Seems kind of simple, right? Across the midline, out to the side. Feel free to use the couch. Across the midline, out to the side. Now keep it in the center, quarter cars, external rotation, internal rotation. Picture your foot. External rotation like a penguin, not a penguin, a pendulum <laughs> or a penguin. External, an internal, sorry. External, one more internal, hold it, hold it, hold it. Notice you're not moving your pelvis, keeping the pelvis totally still. And let's switch sides, right leg up and then across and out. Across and out. One more, fight for your range. Quarter cars, external rotation, internal rotation. Imagining that that leg was a dowel facing straight forward. Your upper thigh moves not at all. Hold it on the internal here. Hold it. Turn your thigh in. Hold it. And lower it down. And you're ready for a great day. Start with that hip mobility, and then the splits shall follow.